How do you fold a plastic parachute for your model rocket? That's what I'm going to cover in this episode. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to fold a parachute. The reason is that there is no best way. The way you fold your parachute depends on how fast you want it to open. Now, sometimes you want it to open fast and sometimes you want it to open slow. It really depends on how strong your parachute is. Ideally, you want your parachute to open as quickly as possible so that it inflates quickly and you know, begins to slow the rocket down as fast as possible. But if you're flying a heavy rocket, it's going to put more stress on your parachute. And so you may want it to come down to open a little bit slower. So first, let's show you how to fold your parachute so that it opens quickly, as fast as possible. So here I've got a plastic parachute. And when I fold it, I always want to fold it. I just don't want to bunch it up. Um, so I'm going to fold it in half and you can see that my corners are already starting to line up. And so basically folding it is just a matter of aligning the corners. So um, I could either align this way or I could go this way. It doesn't matter too much because um, eventually you do have to bring that corner down in. So now I got all my corners aligned like this. Um, before, before you fold, make sure that all your shroud lines are the same length. So I have all my corners together and you can see that it, it attaches at one point and there's no loose lines in there. Um, so make sure that all your, your strings are the same length. Um, so now that I have all my corners together, I'm gonna fold it again like this. Now here's the th thing about making it open fast is to take the shroud lines and then loop them into the parachute like that. So when, when the nose comes off, what it's gonna do is just gonna come ripping right through. You know, it's just gonna stretch those lines out as quickly as possible. The downside of that, as I said, it puts a lot of stress on the parachute corners and that's probably where they're gonna rip. But for small, lightweight rockets, kind of like this one right here that I have, that's totally fine. So again, take that shroud line or your, your suspension lines and loop them into the parachute and then fold it inside like that. Then you're gonna do one fold down like this and then kind of roll in the edges like that. So look how nice and small that is. And it slides easily, plenty of room inside the nose cone. Um, so before you put everything in, make sure you got your recovery wadding. Now your recovery wadding is what protects the parachute from the heat of the ejection charge. So you wanna fill um, the tube about two diameters or at least one and a half diameters worth of length so that it creates like a little plug to really protect the parachute from the heat of the ejection charge. So once I have that in there, then I'll push that in, push it down as far as it'll go. Um, and then you have all this shot cord. Um, there's a number of ways you can do it. You, you do want it to go in, you know, as uniform as possible. So a lot of times I'll just take it and wrap it around my fingers like this and then push it in like that. Because then the, the, uh, when the ejection charge goes off, it's gonna, what it does is it pressurizes the tube and then the nose just kind of pops right off. That's the first thing that's gonna come out. And as it comes out, it's dragging everything with it. Um, so another thing that I'll often do with the shock cord, and I've done this in a different video, is to crochet it, uh, which is kind of like loops. Uh, the other video shows it a lot better. I, you know, I just want to kind of loosely do it real here, real quick. 
I'm making just a series of loops. And what this does is it shortens up the shot cord, but it will still elongate really fast. So now, my, before it was like a big long cord, now it's, I just have this little short piece and then just stuff that inside. And then when the nose comes out at ejection, it's gonna pull it out. You can see my shot cord is um, unwinding just like that. Okay, so that's the way to have the parachute open quickly because it, as I said, what's gonna happen is the shroud lines are gonna come elongate like that and then the parachute's gonna open. So now to open slower, we want to slow down how long these shroud lines take to extend out. Um, and to do that, we're gonna wrap the shroud lines around the canopy. Now you only wanna do this with small rockets. Well, actually you can do this with high power rockets too. <laughs> I've done it both ways. Um, with, if you have a really long parachute, um, you might wanna do a Z fold. So that's two folds. So I'll put one finger about a third of the way along the length of the parachute, bend it backwards like that, and then bend this tip forwards like that. And again, then just roll the parachute up. Again, I got a nice small bundle. And then we wanna wrap the shroud lines around the parachute. But um, instead of just wrapping like this, we actually wanna take the parachute and roll. So we're rolling the parachute up. And what it does is it keeps all the lines, doesn't put a twist in the lines. Okay. So now when the parachute and the, the nose cone comes off the rocket, it has to unwind here first before the parachute will open up. Um, so that's the way to open a little bit slower. And then that's good for um, heavyweight rockets, mid power and high power rockets. Now, if your rocket gets really big, um, you might want to go to a deployment bag. And, and this is what a deployment bag looks like. It's basically just a cloth bag. This one's made out of a, a flame resistant material. Um, so it acts like the wadding itself. So it's protecting the parachute because it's inside. And so here's the end of the shroud lines. Um, now this would be again attached to your nose cone of your rocket. And what we've done here is we've looped the shroud lines back and forth into these loops on the deployment bag. Now the deployment bag, this is gonna be attached to, you know, like the bottom of the rocket right here. So as it comes out of the two, obviously it's a bigger rocket. Um, it'll come out, this stays here, this is attached to the nose cone, the shroud, the, the shock cord runs along next to the side of this. Um, as it comes out, the nose cone's pulling these and you can see they're just coming right out of the loops. Nice and slow, you know, there's a little bit of drag in there that's slowing things down. And then it fully extends. And then there's a, a, another little bit of drag to pull it out of the bag. And then finally the parachute can open up. You can see this is a, a big, I think 36 inch parachute, um, big high power parachute. And again, you wanna fold it just like we did with the smaller one, corners to corners, make it nice and small so that will go inside the bag nice and easy. So that's the two ways that I use to pack a parachute. One way is a quick opening and the other way is a slower opening. It's not super slow, it's just slower. Um, it's while the, the shroud lines are, are unwinding or going through the, the loops on a deployment bag, the rocket is slowing down because the nose is off, the rocket starts tumbling. It's, it's now unstable because without the nose there and with all the mass coming out the front, um, the bottom is unstable. So this is kind of tumbling and it's slowing everything down. So that's kind of why, um, you know, just, delaying the opening of the parachute will slow things down. So if that wasn't confusing, <laughs> um, hit the uh, thumbs up and the subscribe button and the little notification bell so that you get um, 
notified when we release these new videos. Um, and if you have comments and questions, put those down below or come to the Apogee website. Our web address is www.apogeerockets.com. My name again is Tim Van Milligan. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, may all your rockets fly straight and true.